Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Cursive and welcome back to another video. Today we are here with a bit of a different video. I do a lot of discussions on the channel, but today we're actually here with a duel. I have myself and the guest on the channel, Rook's Table. As you guys can see, this is a post commentary, so I was chatting with him for this duel, but you guys won't hear his voice for this duel, but he is here. And uh, yeah, he will also be uploading his side of the duel, which will be linked down in the description below. If uh, if his video isn't up when this video goes up, you guys will see his channel link there instead, but I will switch out the links whenever the video does drop. But um, yeah, we're actually here. We're trying out uh, a deck that both of us built. He built a Toon deck from the new cards. I built a Thousand Eyes Restrict deck from the new cards. Uh, just, you know, doing a bit of playtesting, seeing what the decks are going to look like. But um, yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's get into it here. So as you can see, we did do a match prior to this, and he does win the rock paper scissors as every single rock paper scissors. I chose scissors, he chose rock, and none of us decide to change. But you know, it is what it is. And yeah, we're gonna see us uh, pick up some cards here. And naturally, since the speed duels, you're gonna watch us both put the top card, the last card we drew, back on top of our deck, and both take 4,000 damage and do a quick little shuffle here. So I am going first as. Well, he knows what I am playing here. And, um, yeah. Oh, wait, he also is going to grab his Toon World as, uh, well, the skills don't exist. So just to know that he has Toon World, he grabs, he added a second copy to his deck, and he just grabs that at the beginning. I just go ahead and pass my turn here, because looking at my hand, well, I have two Relinquish and a Black Illusion. And in all honesty, I'd rather not spend my Sphere Karibo to summon a zero attack Relinquished. Instead, I'd rather hold on to it in my hand for future, and, well, I don't really want to burn through all my Relinquish either. So, he goes ahead and drops his Toon Table and searches for a monster here. I think he searched for his Toon Mermaid, and he double drops Toon Mermaid, turn one into a Toon Dark Magician, which is absolutely phenomenal. Discards Toon Barrel Dragon to go ahead and grab another copy of Toon Barrel Dragon, absolutely popping off with the best combo he has in this deck. And I pick up one of the brand new cards that were just revealed, uh, Advanced Ritual Art here, and I'm I'm pretty happy seeing that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my Advanced Ritual Art, drop a copy of Thousand Eyes Idol from my deck so I can Special Summon Relinquish directly from my hand without spending that Sphere Karibo. Uh, yeah, Advanced Ritual Art is honestly really fantastic in this deck, especially when you're trying to run the Thousand Eyes Restrict version with Idol in it. We go ahead and suck up his Toon Barrel Dragon here, and uh, yeah, swing in for some damage on that Toon Dark Magician. Honestly, a really fantastic card, just being able to turbo out those other Toons in the deck. But yeah, Rook will take his first 100 damage here, and I'll pass my turn back over to Rook's table. So he's in a pretty bad position here, as Toon has a lot of trouble uh, recuperating from being in a down circumstance. All he can do is drop his Toon Gemini Elf and set a card. And I'm looking pretty good as I actually just picked up Ready for Intercepting, which is a uh, fantastic card. If he does summon a monster next turn, I can very easily just take it. He does hit me with a Kunai here, though. He's going to use both effects. He's going to put me in defense, and he's going to buff up his Toon Gemini Elf to a 2400 beater, which is able to swing over my Relinquished, as he only has 2200 defense points at the moment. Now... Obviously, Barrel Dragon will get popped, so I'll just be able to suck up his uh, Gemini Elves here. So we're actually probably not going to see Rook go for that play. But it is optional if he did decide to, but there really is no reason. So he's doing a bit of thinking here now. And I do believe that we're just going to see Rook uh, pass his turn here without doing anything. We can go ahead and uh, speed this up a little bit. He does enter battle, and... Ah, uh, yes, so Toon Gemini Elf was on the field for um, one turn, so he was able to attack me directly there. But I do hit him with the Spear Karibo, because I have it in hand, there's really no reason not to drop it. And I pick up the Double Cyclone, which is genuinely phenomenal. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to go ahead and pop this Double Cyclone here, pop his Toon Barrel Dragon, and pop his back row. So Windstorm is destroyed here, which is very, very big for me, and then I just get to suck up his Toon Gemini Elf. So I now have a 1900 Relinquished. His field is empty except for his singular copy of Toon World. And yeah, I'm just going to swing in for 1900 damage. 
So we've been playing this fairly commanding, although we haven't seen a Thousand Eyes Strict as the only copy of Idol we've seen. We actually hit off Advanced Ritual Art here. And I'm curious what he picked up. He does pick up a Night Beam, yes, and he does hit my copy of Ready for Intercepting here. Not that it does matter, and obviously at this point, he doesn't have any other plays, so I just have to pick up any monster with attack points to game him. But I pick up a copy of uh, Thousand Eyes Idol. And at this point, there's definitely no reason to pop my Fusion Party skill and go into Restrict, so I just swing it for 19. He draws for turn, and a tune deck in top deck mode really is not going to pull through. He does grab a copy of Tune Table, and once again, he will just search for a monster, and he'll normal summon his Tune Gemini Elves. But I do have a Relinquished available to me in hand, so I'm really not too worried. And I draw another one. But, um, yeah, so a lot of you guys might question the fact that Rook is only going Tune Table and not going Tune Table into Tune Table into Tune Table into Tune Monster. And, well, in all honesty, um, I do think I agree with what he's doing, because he does want to see uh, Tune Mermaid more often than not. And going Tune Table, Tune Table, Tune Table, Tune Mermaid would actually lower his chances of seeing Tune Mermaid later on, because running having two Tune Mermaids, two Tune Tables in his deck versus having just two Mermaids, well, obviously, the ratio and the chances... Uh, it's better if he runs more copies. Along with that, um, he's playing against Relinquished, a uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict, which can very easily stall. So it's better to not completely just run through your entire deck here. But um, I am able to take game one fairly confidently, too. Uh, there wasn't too much on the go there. I basically had control of the game right from the get-go. And we do, of course, get to do our pickup here. We get to take half our life points, and we get to put the top card back on our deck, and Rook's going to go ahead and grab his Toon World. So yeah, so far we've got to show you guys the uh, classic, uh, fancy, advanced ritual art here. Very, very powerful in the deck. And we do see me with the uh, both copies of the required fusion materials, 4,000 eyes restrict here, since I do have a Senju. And you will see me say Fusion Party in the chat, and I will then drop the Fusion Materials and Special Summon Thousand Eyes Restraint. So I did debate this for a while because, well, if you guys look at Thousand Eyes Restraint here, he does say other monsters on the field cannot change their battle position or attack. Meaning, Thousand Eyes Restraint is the only monster that can actually do anything right now, and, well, there's no reason for me to. There wasn't. I wasn't sure if the, I should play Thousand Eyes because then I can't attack. But then I also thought, well, if he gets out a lot of monsters, maybe it's a better decision. But he actually just sets one and passes over. So the fact that I can't do anything with a Strict here, it's a little bit brutal. But in a stall scenario, I do win the deck out. So I am just chilling with my Restrict here. He's, he's just vibing. He's chilling on the field. Not too much happening. I obviously pass my turn back over to Rook because, well, I have nothing to do. I could drop a Relinquish instead of Restrict, but, well, I don't have a copy of my Illusionist Faceless Mage, so I'm not going to take that risk. Just pass turn over the Rook. We're going to see what Rook wants to do here, and he actually has double Toon Mermaid, which is his big boy play here, right into his Toon Dark Magician, drop another copy of Toon Dark Magician, and we're going to see him grab the Toon Barrel Dragon which is his main out to my Thousand Eyes Restrict, potentially his only out. I'm not quite sure if he does have anything else here. But we do see him flip coin. He does land on heads for the first flip. If he lands on heads again, he does land on heads twice, and he is able to pop my Thousand Eyes Restrict. And, well, I don't have a copy of... Um, what's it called? Uh, Illusionist in my hands, so... Yeah, nothing I can do about that. He's got over my Restrict. But I am in a pretty decent position here, as I have Advanced Ritual Art and Relinquish, so I am going to go ahead and pop off with that. Hit that last copy of Idol from my deck, so I don't have to worry about drawing him later on. Because if you pop Fusion Party, then drawing into Idol is basically worthless. So I'm able to drop Relinquish tier and suck up his tune, Barrel Dragon. 
Yum, yum, yum. There we go. There's that Tomb Barrel Dragon in Relinquish's belly. And, um, Ashiel swing into Dark Magician. I do get hit with the Windstorm, and there is not much I can do about that. We've got a pass turn over, and, well, Tomb Dark Magician is now, um, completely able to attack, which is terrible for me. Terrible for me. We're gonna see, obviously, his... Oh, we're actually gonna see a Toon Table come down here first. Toon Gemini Elves, and then we're probably gonna see Toon Dark Magician's effect pop. Yep, discarding Toon Gemini Elves and summoning out a, the second copy of Toon Barrel Dragon. He does run his deck. We'll probably see him pop Barrel Dragon's effect. Yep, we do see him pop that effect. He lands on Tails. He lands on Heads. And he lands on tail, so he does not get to pop my relinquished here. But, but we do see Toon rollback come down. This is an older card, but Tiger One Two Monster you control it can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. So he is able to swing in with his Dark Magician here. Twenty-five to the face. He can make a second attack. And that's going to be game two. So I did get OTK by uh, by two Dark Magician, which brings me and Rook to a one-one. Um, so yeah, that's basically the uh... yeah, that's basically what this deck can offer. He doesn't have to pay to attack with these monsters. If I do pop Tomb World, they don't get popped. And well, yeah, two Dark Magician can just turbo out these guys like crazy, and you have OTK potential. So yeah. Tunes are pretty decent. I do think Restrict has a bit more uh, power ceiling like as a whole, but, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Obviously here I do opt to go second as I want my opponent to set up a field here. Um, also in every single, after game one, and I just stuck with this, I started in a copy of Waking the Dragons and a copy of Lava Golem. And this game we do see the Waking the Dragons. And I do know that Rook likes his Night Beams. So yeah, I'm very happy to see this. Once again, we do see Tomb World come down, as that is his skill. And yeah, he's going first here. So we will see what Rook decides to do on his first turn. We are going to see a set and pass. We do indeed, which is very good against this deck. Because, well, he knows the most damage that I can deal is 1400. And dropping... Restrict really doesn't do anything for me right now. And I will go for that 1400 damage here as I do drop my copy of Senju. Search for that third copy of Relinquished. Here he is. And set my Waking the Dragons, hoping that eventually Rook will just pop that card. Come on, there we go. And yeah, we'll go in and we'll swing in for 14. Obviously, Rook's not too worried about 1400 damage. Not going to be too much for him here, and uh, yeah, I'll pass my turn. We do see Rook pick up, and I think he drops Night Beam right here. Maybe. Maybe. We do see Rook immediately drop the Night Beam, hitting my back row, and it is waking the dragons. So I go ahead and check out my extra deck here, and I actually drop uh, Thousand Hatch Strict. I could have dropped a bigger monster like Blue Eyes Alt or uh, Arcana Knight or something like that, but my mindset was, one, this is a feature match. I got to feature Thousand Eyes Restrict. And two, oh my god, I can summon Thousand Eyes Restrict. I, I, I got really hype and I didn't really think too much. I just wanted to drop that Restrict. So yeah, Restrict's chilling on the field. And, um, there's not much I don't think that Rook can do about it right now. So... We do just see Rook pass. And I'll pick up a copy of Double Cyclone here. And I will also just pass my turn. We're in a bit of a stall circumstance here. I can't attack, because Restrict stops all other monsters from attacking. And, well, Rook can't really go in until he has a way to summon to Barrel Dragon. So we do see a lot of passing back and forth here. I do opt to set my Double Cyclone and my Advanced Ritual Art in case I need to pop the Toon World or a face down later on. But um, yeah, just so that's live for, for later play. So we're going to see Rook do another draw. And pass turn over. I will also pass turn back to Rook. 
And we're doing a lot of passing here. Rook picks up a Toon Table, grabs Toon Mermaid, and he passes. I pick up Spirit Rebo, and I pass my turn. He picks up, and he has to discard a card. He discards his extra Toon World, passes back over to me. I am my turn. I discard a Relinquish because I have all three copies. Pass turn back over to him. And Rook gets to pop off the triple copy of Toon Mermaid. Which is, it's, it's, you know, I think that's pretty cool to see. Obviously, we're going to see the Toon Dark Magician come down here. It was either Dark Magician or Barrel Dragon, as both those are probably the best Toon monsters in the game currently. Or when the new set comes out, that is. We see, him, we see that he's actually running a copy of Toon Mass Sorcerer, which is very, very interesting. And obviously, we see Rook search for the Toon Barrel Dragon here. A fantastic card, and his main out to my Restrict. We see him hit Tails on his first flip. We see him hit heads on his second flip, and we see him hit tails on his third flip. So he does not get to destroy my restrict, as he does require to hit two copies of heads to pop my card. At this point, I think we will just see Rook pass turn over, unless he does want to set something, and he does set a card. So I'm, I'm in a pretty okay position. I still have my fusion party active. I have two copies of idol, two copies of relinquished. You know, we're, we're doing pretty good. Double cyclone set. Um, obviously, I'm going to suck up his Barrel Dragon here and attempt to swing over Dark Magician. We do see the Windstorm come out. Nothing I can do with that. My monsters hit defense position and it's over to Rook's turn. We're going to see Dark Magician obviously try to hit that Barrel Dragon again. He discards his Toon Table, not activating it because he doesn't want to deck thin. And we will see him grab the Toon Barrel Dragon. I discard a card because I forgot to do that last turn because of hand size. And we're going to see him start flipping. We see heads. And we see tails. And we see him hit the head. So he is able to pop my Thousand Eyes Restrict, which is very big because now he is able to attack. And both Toon Dark Magician and Toon Mermaid are live right now. So he's in a he's in a pretty pretty good position. He does drop his Toon Rollback, and he targets his Toon Mermaid. For those of you who are curious, why is he targeting Toon Mermaid? I'm actually going to pause the game here. It's because he knows I have Ready for Intercepting. If he targets Toon Dark Magician, and I Ready for Intercepting him, well, there's nothing he can do about that. So, in fear of Ready for Intercepting, he targets Toon Mermaid, because regardless, he should still have game. When he, when he does that, I go ahead, I double Cyclone, and I pop is Toon World. There goes Toon Mermaid, it's now destroyed. Toon Rollback was wasted and he can't gain me this turn. He does swing into my monster as he can no longer attack directly without his copy of Toon World and I go ahead and steer approval that. So yeah, and then I pick up Lava Golem. I told you I side decked this card and Waking the Dragons in every game. So naturally, I'm hype because he has two big monsters. I have Lava Golem. Let's do it. I tribute off both of his monsters. Special summon my Lava Golem. I pop Fusion Party, hit Idle, hit Relinquished, and drop a Thousand Eyes Restrict. This play right here is genuinely powerful. It is honestly broken, and I think I'm going to need to main deck Lava Golem in this deck. Because Lava Golem is going to burn Rook for a thousand damage during each of his standby phases, and Lava Golem can't attack as long as Restrict is sitting on the field. Along with that, he's burned through both copies of Barrel Dragon, which is the only out he's shown to my Restrict. So, it seems like I should just be able to stall him out here. So I pass my turn, he picks up, takes a thousand, checks his graveyard, and that's it. He passes his turn back to me. I do draw my Illusionist, first time I'm seeing it in these three games, but at this point it's it's actually probably still good. I normal summon Thousand Eyes Idol for the flex, because I know I'm going to win right now. He burns for another thousand, he sets a card, it's a Night Beam. He sets another card, it's Tomb Rollback, these are bluffs. Not that I need to worry about them anyway. I pass turn, and Rook is going to get burned for... One, another 1,000 damage with only 600 left. That will be game. We're just showing each other our hands now at this point, and uh, yeah. Overall, 
it was honestly a fantastic game. I really don't think we could have asked for a better game three. It was uh, it was a lot of back and forth, and we got to show off the power of Lava Golem. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you enjoy my content. And honestly speaking, I think I really underestimated the power of Thousand Eyes Restrict. I think this card is going to be absolutely crazy in the upcoming format. And um, yeah, I think that uh, that flip effect monster that returns cards to hand, I can't remember his name at the moment, but I think he's going to see a lot of play uh, when Restrict does drop, especially if we see a good skill come out with, with Thousand Eyes as well. But regardless, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much, Rook, for being on the channel and uh, joining me and playing some, some Yu-Gi-Oh! But anyway, that's a wrap, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out.